Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. Today I'm going to do kind of fun things with you. I, you know, I told you we were going to move towards Richard Smith's uh, um, Grand Manor style, some of the ways in which he would attack an alla prima. Most of that's going to be through ton tonal stuff, so I have to incorporate a little bit of color theory. But today what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a few of those techniques, and I'll explain to you which ones I'm going to use as we go along. But I also want to uh, do something I've only done a couple times with you, and that is to uh, paint a painting into a frame. In other words, you know, frames today are really expensive, and especially you get the nice ones. And when you come across some, and uh, you know, it's, it's nice to paint a painting for that particular frame instead of the reverse of painting a painting then finding a frame. And so my wife was out at, and she got this really nice one at uh, Hobby Lobby up in Cheyenne, Wyoming, here a couple weeks ago, and uh, it's going to be perfect to sit over in the uh, the downstairs here in the uh, in the studio over we have a set of couches and a TV over there my thinking couch I call it so I, it's going to be perfect over that and so and I want to paint some of those flowers that you see there those are paintings that I done uh, here for YouTube maybe paint those I also want to put in this container I think that container right there that that uh, Hand, uh, antique uh, hammered brass would be beautiful inside that particular frame and so I'm going to paint that frame well I'm going to have that frame to look at use those colors here into the painting paint those flowers and design everything for it so this morning what I did is I sat down and did a little bit of sketching um, you know and that's that photo is about the the size of the container that I want to do and usually what I do is I'll draw a center line down and then I'll take calipers and say, okay, center line out to the edge and center line out to the edge. That's what it is. And then I start my drawing and I position some flowers around here. Those of you that are in the uh, memberships, I'll put a photo of my initial sketch here, even though it's not much, but I'll put a photo of it and uh, so you can get some ideas, all right? This uh, board here, um, this, of course, it matches this frame, and it is uh, 18 by 24, so it's 18 inches this way, 24 inches this way, a standard, uh, standard uh, painting and stuff. One of the things that I look at when I do that for a frame is the width of the frame to the size of what are your main elements. A lot of you that follow flowers with me, I know you know that I set up what is called the queen, and this is going to be the queen. I'm going to bring my light source in slightly a little bit more left of what you see on the photo, reference photo. But uh, so I'll bring it right about into here. And I want these, I want these flowers right here to, to catch the main part of the light. Then some flowers that disappear and some, and the design fading off into that way. That's what's in my mind. <laughs> Let's see if we can do it, okay? So this board, what I did is I gave it two coats of the uh, canvas prep medium, the Jansen Art canvas prep medium, okay? And uh, then we're ready to go, okay? I sanded it lightly with 180 grit sandpaper. Now I have my my basic palette out here. This is the, it's, all the colors are listed in the video description below the video here. So, you know, you know where to go. This is my standard Dave's favorite YouTube palette that I paint with on YouTube, Okay, now let's just take my big brush. This is my two inch brush. And I, you know, one of my favorite grays to use in foundations, especially a la prima flowers, is green and burnt sienna. I love these two colors together because I can just vary that look so much. And I'm gonna add some white to this and take this up to kind of a tan color. Now, when you add a lot of white, you start to make a color opaque. So I wanna be careful not to make it too opaque. So I'll add quite a bit of medium. You can even add, so it doesn't take too long to dry. You can add water and extender together and make a, a, a you know, kind of a slow medium or medium drying, uh, uh, you know, um, medium drying, quick drying, uh, uh, you know, liquid here or, or paint. And I'm just gonna put this over and I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna, I love brush marks and stuff, so I, I want to put this tone down onto the canvas. Now, you've seen me do it all kinds of ways, and you may have your favorite way to do it. You know, that is up to you. I've done it with sponges. I've done it with paper towels. I've done it all different kinds of ways. But I want to take away the majority of the white of the, uh, the canvas or the board here. This is a quarter inch board, so I want to take that away. And this adds some initial 
brush movements and stuff like that into my background. I'm going to paint the background. We're going to do all that fun art stuff all over this. But uh, this just takes it away and lets me start to look at it. Now, while that is, it doesn't have to be wet. Let me just wipe this and see. I like doing this because I can just clean up my palette here a little bit. Take this paper towel that's right here and let's back it out, this color right back out of, and you can even kind of set in some of your main, you know, areas of the flowers where you want that light to hit them going to the back. So I'll imagine light tracking back through here and hitting a few areas. It'll hit here and there on that. So I can see the light moving down through. It'll hit the top of this one that's right back there. Maybe this edge slightly. So I just lightly, lightly take some of it off of that one back there. Lightly take it off back through this one here. So this is a technique, you know, moving with the paper towel that I like to do a lot. You saw me in the uh, hydrangeas do something very similar to this, right? Now, in, uh, in the front here, if I really want this hammered brass to glow, it's not really all that necessary, but if I really want that hammered brass to go and I can check that light, and I'm going to, here's my halfway mark that I use one with my calipers here to say. And so I'm going to move it over here about halfway between that halfway mark and the edge of the, the bowl. I'll put the light into it there. And so you can see the light right there. Okay. And that's all I need to do. It just helps me visualize, you know, some of those colors and some of that stuff. Now, what I'm going to do is take my one inch brush. Okay, and I'm going to decide, which I already know, this is my center of interest. And just like you see me do with so many other paintings, just like on those roses and stuff in that video when you paint it, I'm going to restate now with slightly thicker paint, my burnt sienna, Ross, uh, my burnt sienna green. Sometimes I'll use blue and red. Sometimes I'll add some violets and yellows to it. Uh, I just like these colors. Maybe even add a little open medium. What this does is, It'll slow it down so I can have some time to manipulate the color, but it leaves it thick. It's not like extender that thins it. So you can see extender thins it down. This is going to leave my color thicker. And so this is where I want my movement, my background movement and stuff to come up through here. And I'll let some of that soften out through there. But see where you get this greens and burnt siennas and stuff like that different colors that comes from not mixing them up i'm tapping them here onto my palette and i'm not mixing them up and that is what i'm looking for is this this expression of color here and i want to do strong verticals and horizontals so we'll we'll push some of this in uh here because it's going to be you know a, a it's going to give the feeling of our ground line and stuff as well. So I'm just going to pick up some nice thick paint. We'll put in our table line over here where that's going to be. And then maybe just bring this down. See the, the streaking of the colors to it? That's what adds the interest. And you can pull some down. We're going to put all kinds of brush marks in here. Part of this right now is just to get you to see some of this stuff here. We're going to have the what's called the contact shadow and the cast shadow back over here. And then I'm just going to, as I come out of that area here, I'm just going to manipulate the color around a bit. And then as I go to some of the back, I can thin it out again. So after I'm out of, oh, which I didn't put enough right up, back up in here. So we'll do that as well. But uh just, be, just when I'm coming out of this particular area, let's get some of that green out of there too. And, oh, and this is, this is something. So, see, I got a little bit of green cast. Now, that's not bad, actually. I kind of like that. But if something, you do something you don't like, what is your solvent? Your solvent is always water. Take the edge of your paper towel, just dip it in your little bit of water here, okay? And you just take that and you pull right down through and you'll take that right back off. See how you take that off? Now, so I can wipe that all clean if I want. But I do like backgrounds traveling into the flowers. I like that because that, that harmonizes the flowers with the, the background around it. So I don't mind that happening at all. And you'll see me do that 
a lot of times with the flowers to relax their edges and stuff like that. But as I come out here now, we'll add a little water, maybe a little extender here, and we'll lighten up the feeling as we come out here. We'll do more back out here. We'll do a lot more back out here. But I just want to create this kind of very simplistic movement right up front. All this will cover up. This is part of the reason why you do all of this is to give you some visualization of what the painting is going to look like. So those of you that study and, you know, have lots of courses, online courses on, on basically all of this in color theory, what we call through light, I will have through light into the painting coming right here. It's going to come right from this part. As a matter of fact, I'll just take that light right out there. So you can see the light, where the light's going to go through. Through light will hit through here, go back through here, and then keep that lighter back there. So I want to make it darker along the ground line. Walk this up, but then let some of this, let some of this stay lighter back up here in what is called through light, through the painting. Because the light doesn't just stop at the front of the painting. It continues on through. And it'll hit right back up here in what we call through light into it. So we'll just take some of this, tap this around. I'll be doing a lot of that later on. But I just want to, you know, manipulate that background that's there, okay? So it gives you kind of an idea. And let's, re let's do that center of interest up there again. More burnt sienna, more green in here let's pop in some more contrast nice thick 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 paint here into these areas coming in and out of that area it's that, it's that nice dark i want that nice dark right back up in here before it hits that light and some of these and you'll notice that you know when i paint and a lot of times like when i'm when i'm painting the casual parts of stuff and I started this a long time ago, but I paint with both my hands. And that's because my left hand does stuff that's completely different from my right hand. And so when I want something to be really casual with the movement, I switch to my left hand, and it gives you a different types of movements and stuff. And, uh, it, you know, wait, years ago, and I'll, I'll go off subject here for just a second. Years ago, I was reading that... You know, how do you, you know, good art, the really good, really great artist use both hands. And how do you get yourself to use both hands? And what I did for a number of years was, now that I can do it, I can do it. I can do scrolls and stuff with both hands. But when I started using computers, I switched over to use the, the mouse with my left hand for quite a long time. I don't now. It's back to my right hand. But it my left hand and learned how to really do all the manipulation and stuff like that with my left hand and so my left hand and as I paint is more casual now you don't need to do that that's just uh, that's just one but a lot of times you'll set up patterns and stuff with one hand and it's it's kind of fun it was a neat thing that I read and how to develop it a little bit more and they said switch hands and you know so you, and and I started to do that I started to switch hands and yeah, it worked, and it taught me how to paint with both hands, so, and I learned that. But see, this is what I like. See the color modulation through there? I like that. And I'll put a little bit back up over here, and let it just kind of come out of that darkness here a bit, and work that out softer. And I think that will work. And all these colors, I think, let's grab this real quick. All those colors, see, will work very nice inside this frame. So, yeah, kind of excited about that. I think that will go pretty well, pretty well. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to block in my plan. And I do make a plan when I start a big painting like this, you know, in my head. What do I start? I'm going to block in some of the lower, not as dark as I, as I see, but some of the lower tones of this container here and one of the th tones immediately is that burnt sienna a little bit of green here and if you look at that it gets really much burnt sienna green over here more of a reddish one right in through there but right now I'm just going to push in some burnt sienna a little bit of green into this and again this will give just some nice harmony also to the painting I'll look 
here where I want this color into this brass. And notice the different brush marks that I make. I'm using a wide variety, not just bump, 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 you know, putting it in and drawing. No, I'm using a wide variety of marks here. And that's going to be very important when you paint this hammered brass look that you have a variety of marks. And so I switch and hold my brush slightly different. So in other words, I may make the line of the lower ridge there of that, but I make it with a several different marks here in some different directions so that happens. Now we'll take the burnt sienna. We'll add a bit of the red to it so it's a bit more red. And we'll come over here and start some of this in right into there. It's a warmer tone and that'll come in there. And so this is what I call the initial blocking in. It's nothing perfect. It's the under, basically the underpainting of this. So, and we'll vary that in a little bit more. Now we get a, a touch more green over here. And you can add open medium. I love painting with open medium. I don't need it to stay wet here very long because I am not blending at all with this. I am, I will be doing tone painting uh, more than anything else, tonal painting. So I don't need it to really stay wet. But here, slightly more green. We'll put some of that in, some of these marks in here. And again, this is the underpainting, the blocking in of it. And I know it's very, very similar to here. I can see the difference of where it is. And in the final, we'll, they will come closer together, but we'll make them a little different. Now into that light source, let's grab a little bit brighter orange. So burnt the uh, yellow oxide, a little of this orange and burnt sienna here, right into this area. Let's drop some of that in here and you can see my color is you know my color is very wet it's that it's that medium right there it adds a little bit of translucency to the paint so it's not opaque which is fine for me but it and it keeps it very wet and strokeable you can see it feels just like an oil here now like a real loose oil and uh, <clears throat> then I'll take some of this light and right down for the reflected light of the bowl, which is going to come onto the lower side here. And it's going to pick up some of these tones right around through here. This will be the reflected light. L reflected light is light that hits the table and goes back up and hits it there. So, and I'll work this edge, my drawing, a little bit that I lost just a bit leave some of this, don't do it too much that you get rid of that hammered look of that color. We want to preserve that in that part of the painting. Let's go just a touch of white into this and we'll add some of that right in here. Mark, mark, different marks. You're nothing perfect. Maybe a quick little mark It'll be right with the, I'm just looking at the, the reference photo and seeing where do I see the light. Oh, and I got to move this over just a bit, which is easy to do. Let's just back some of that burnt sienna and green out right here. Take it a little bit further across here and move that light over just a bit. <laughs> and... There we go. And step way back on your brush. Way back on the handle of your brush. Here, that'll be good. And we'll restate some of that light. Now we'll let, and see it doesn't, I'm a acrylic painter, so I don't need that to stay all wet. I don't like it when it stays all wet. It actually, to me, becomes harder to paint. I'd rather paint in tones, so I'll let some of that dry up. We'll put in some of the top there. We'll put in just a bit of the shadow look that's going to be on that top rim there. A lot of, we have a lot of detail to do on this, so this is just a quick, this is just a quick uh, painting of it, just an idea of where this is going to go. This is going to be that little beaded edge, that beaded band there, 
and we'll put a little bit of light on top of it. And so for the, like the smaller things like this little beaded band, I don't worry about getting, you know, we have light. If you want, you can come back like with a little bit of white. If you want, you can express the light source there, express the light source there, and express the light source there. So you see where the light source is going down. On the smaller areas, I don't always do that. That's that's your artistic choice, you know, because I, I kind of know where I'm going to go with everything, and I've done this a long time. But if you're a beginner, I always say, put the light source, put the light source, put the light source. And if you need to, before you even leave anything that's like this, just tap in the light source so you can see it really easy where that light's going to be and what that when, what that quality of light, light's going to be. So maybe a little yellow around the edges of it and stuff like that. So where that light's going to be. Not all of this, and what you got to remember is, all of this is going to change, okay? It's all going to change. So we'll put that in right now. We'll grab a little more yellow maybe and grab just a, a little heavier yellow. I'm going to have, and eventually in this area right in here, I'm going to have lots of paint. But now when you look at this, see, you see a little green, a little burnt sienna, some green, some yellow, some light, some different colors coming out in there. Some of the oranges what, that I want to have in there, maybe a, a touch more of that orange and just a few strokes here, marks right over here. And that's what I want to have. Now, I'm going to take some of these colors that are here, maybe a little extender in them. And I'm going to come right up here by my queen that I'm going to paint. The rose is going to control the composition, and I'm going to put some of those in her. Now, immediately, what do you see? Harmony. It's pulling these colors right up to here. And so, especially in my center of interest roses, what I usually do is I come back and I call it just a splash. Just give them a splash of some of these colors here into, into these these guys a little bit less and a little bit less, but that's going to cause the harmony in there. Now, just like we do with the rose, now you can come in here and you can push this color around, which is something that I really enjoy doing, pushing the color around to move that there. But what is most important now, we're going to take a little bit of our quinacridone, a little bit of our red violet, maybe just add a touch of the, this, these colors in here for harmony. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to come right down into the throat of what this rose is going to be right in here. Tap that around and then just small little touches. Oh, and this brush, I forgot to tell you about that. This is a 10 filbert. I'm painting with a 10 filbert. You could use a flat. I like the filbert if I do a lot of drawing because it has a drawing edge on it, that rounded corner that you see me do so many times. I like that drawing corner of it. Let's push a little bit here. That other flower I did over there doesn't have that, but I like that. Let's add a little bit of extender here. We'll push some of that, push some of those reds and stuff right down in here. Some of that deeper color right down into the throat of that rose there. Okay, and I like that look so I overpainted this one just a touch, so I'll be able, I'll be able to loosen it back up. But <clears throat> see, it starts to get a little blended right back through there. I like the more rough look and laying other colors on top. So I touched it too many times. I wanted to show you exactly what not to do. <laughs> okay, no, we can fix everything. We're professionals. We can fix it. So. And you can paint with, if you like the color slightly thinner, you can paint with extender. You like them slightly thicker, you can paint with some open medium here. But let's come back in. Now, one of the, the things that I added into those flowers that I really enjoyed, because the overall painting right now is warm. And so I add a little bit of the coolness to it, the blues. And so I add just a touch of the blues, the cooler grays into the backs of the flowers here, which adds a coolness to the entire painting. And we'll, we'll take some of that coolness. Look at how this coolness works over here for reflected light too. It'll work inside that painting. Very nice for reflected light. So this is thetal blue and white. So on the down downward reflected light backsides of the roses and stuff, 
I love some of that cool. I can even have some of it, just a bit of it back here on this rose there. Just a bit of it before I get into any of those lights you can see. So this is a beautiful, cool color that we can use. And I see, I'm going to want this one to come back over. So maybe I'll add a little bit of blue in there. A little bit of blue. A little bit of light blue. See how that light blue changes the whole feeling here. Let's take it on this side here. Changes the whole feeling of the painting here, see? This does great things. Now, let's go in, and so you can start anywhere, but I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go back up to my light. I didn't even clean my brush, so I have a little bit of that blue, but now I'm gonna reach right back up over here to my light, and let's come back up and let's push that light right in here on this part of the bowl. That's where the bolt. So what I do is I put on this this half of the rose here, and I can push this soften it or do anything I want. Sometimes you'll see me just move it. I move it like this to soften that exchange down into the bowl there. But I'm going to push that color there up into that area, and let's uh, you know rough it up a bit here because we want these flowers, these pet, these roses here to take on a rough edge to the the uh, the more manner style here so I don't want them to be super smooth I want them to be a little bit rougher here and so I'll add some of this and I try not as I do this I try not to stroke too many times so what you see me do basically here is I'm imparting that bowl now Let's take a little lighter, maybe yellow, pink, right in here. A little bit of this pink. Model some of this color into here. And we'll soften down some of that dark. Now this is where I will, I will move these colors back and forth a couple of times. So I softened that, I eliminated that a little more than I like. So I'll just take a tiny corner and poke that around to put in some more movement into that flower. Sometimes I will, you know, if I feel like it's too much the same, I'll put in a little yellow or something just to get that edge there a bit more. I'll wipe my brush. I constantly wipe my brush with my paper towel. That's why you see paint on my hands all the time. I'm going to come back here and pick up a little bit more white. Step back on my brush and use it just kind of chunky here. Just kind of quick little mark. If the mark is too heavy, wipe your brush like this. And you can tap into it and pull down and you'll you'll hit that color that's underneath there and see that adds an extra little bit of movement to it. And those are things that I do all the time. If my if I make that mark and I feel that color's too heavy, it's opaque, it wiped out too much of the flower, I just pinch wipe my brush and I dig it out a little bit and I reveal some of the other color and those get picked up and they and it works really nice. Let's come back out right out here. We want that light to hit right in there, okay? And maybe uh, pull out some of this here. I'll wipe my brush, and I'm just going to bring this together a bit. Now I'm going to manipulate this edge probably several, several times here during the painting because I want this. And you see, I just did small marks and lift up, so I... You know, and you can leave that. That doesn't have to soften out. You can take your finger and blur something, but that really doesn't have to soften out. And in this type of style, we let those edges. So here you can see I have a edge, heavy pink, but see that little light edge on that corner there. And I'll lean over to the corner, and this is what I'll draw that petal with that I want right there to shape that rose. And I like that. So maybe I'll wipe my brush and I'll remove some of this excess right in here as that's coming into the bowl. And what that does is it leaves me another place right in there to put in some more petals, to work in and, and work some more petals on the flowers. Let's add a few little petals. See that little corner? See, I can just draw with that little corner of that. Let's add a few there. Let's add a few you know, the other rows that I really like, I opened up, so maybe we'll leave this one open. So to, o to close it down, you pull this way. To open it up, you pull from this way into the flower, and that opens up the flower 
opens up the petals and everything into the flower and leave little marks leave leave your little marks because that just does great things to the inside of that flower little tiny marks as long as they're slightly turned and stuff they all work it all works now i'm going to fracture this edge a bit more that's this is what i mean by fracture so it the petal itself there is not completely perfect see it was too much of a v shape there for me so i'm going to take some of that off and then i'm going to take some thicker white right through here and i'm just going to push this down to build up this front side of the rose right there a bit more now if it starts to get too white or something on you, then just pick up a little yellow, put that in your brush, lightly, just, just be brave, just stroke right across it there and take away some of that white so you can put in a tiny bit of yellow. What you're looking for in all of this, and as I do this, and see I do little touches, little marks, this is with my left hand too. I, I do little touches, little marks to remove some of it. So I create the movement, more of the movement within that particular flower. See? So I'm going to come back here, pick up a little bit more white. And let's put in a bigger petal right in here. One of them right in there. I want, a little, I want more white. So now I'm really laying on some thick paint here. See? I have some thick, thick paint there. Let's lay some thick paint. You can see I pick up a lot. Look at how much paint I pick up. That'll shock some of you. I pick up a lot of paint. And see, I'm laying it up on top. This is creating the petal up on top of that other one. Now, I'll wipe some of the excess off my brush. And I'll bring these two together. Sometimes I'll do it quite a bit. Sometimes just a little. I'm going to put some more paint right here kind of round those two together but I want this rose to be not I love that that one that's right there and you can watch me paint that on YouTube um but I don't want one quite as that one has quite a stroke petals to it because I want your eye to move through the painting here a little softer so I'm a little I'm watching and you'll you'll learn in time I'm I'm doing this to uh, create this visual journey through the painting so and we talk a lot about that in color theory class and stuff and creating a visual journey which is really important into the painting I'm going to take a little edge maybe I'll do just a bit of an edge here to that petal there just because it fractures that edge a bit let's take that tiny edge maybe a little bit of our tone colors with that so it's not quite as light powerful and let's just push some of that some of that right back through here so we're going to make and work and develop on the shadow side of the rose here so we have the light side of the rose shadow side of the rose and see when I add that open medium this all stays wet for quite a long time and I can push some of that blue right into this side maybe a little bit more blue and white so it's, it's cool, but lighter here, right up into the front. And let's go a little bit lighter, warmer, right up into this very front, maybe to some pure, thick white, a couple strokes right here, right up in this area, and leave some of these marks, these mottled marks here, because that adds interest there into your rose. So, now let's take a look. I like, kind of like that rose, how it did that there. And try not to get paint here, Dave, on your frame. And so that's, that's going to kind of work, I think. So this rose, even though I can go back and do more to it, and I always do suggest that you go back and do more, maybe a little bit more chunky white right up here in the front, a few little marks here. Sometimes I'll push it to get those marks further out because I don't want to do too much strokes which will make it start to look stiff so I'll push it a little bit here let's just build this one a touch here just so I, I want that now that petals a little light for that shadow side so I'll, I'll stroke back through it and 
just leave those edges so you get the idea of that petal maybe a bit more white right here coming out there and I got a you know pretty good except for that rose is slightly cut do you see that cut in half now so I'll push this one right up on top of it a little bit more and that'll take care of that that cut look there but wipe your brush maybe take from your shadow and lift off just a bit here so you push that mark that direction into that anyway it gives you a nice rose let's go over and do another one here let's make this one a little bit more red slightly different color a little bit more red right here into the center and uh, red and then into some orange maybe so they're beautiful roses but they can have different uh, colors onto them okay doesn't have to always be the same let's take some of our white let's hit our light source right here okay boom right through there let's put the center I haven't put the center throat on see you can start any different way especially now that I have my main rows done I know where I'm gonna go with these other roses here my main rose is gonna control what I do with all of these others and I'll push color around I'll look for my light where my lights gonna hit on this rose and I have this one and this one lined up exactly the same so I'll change that and how many of my advanced students noticed that and didn't say anything huh <laughs> yeah so I'm gonna change this one down slightly so I'll, as I paint it center here I'm gonna push it I don't like two roses lined up with the same uh, direction because that puts too much emphasis in that one direction so we'll change this one slightly down and it's really easy to change that so this one goes slightly this way this one's going to go slightly down here a little bit more here we'll open that up there we go that'll be fine and we'll get uh, and this isn't our main row so we'll get a little bit more casual with its painting here even leave some of that casual color there that'd be pretty that casual violets red violets maybe close this one down a little bit more here there like that okay uh, let's put in just a touch more white up here because that's where the light is hitting right there softer one right back up in here as it's going to collide with that one a bit I like the roses to collide in design we call that formal a formality of design and so I always like a formality of design in and around my center of interest and then where I move out I like it to become less formal and that is you you move the the roses and stuff further apart we'll let some of that blue here take over here just some easy going color on that that'll be pretty maybe a bit more white touch of yellow touch of warmth into that here right out here put in the idea of an, another petal or something on it we'll tone down a bit let's get some of that background burnt sienna and green which is real pretty colors here push some of that into this shadow here and <clears throat> maybe and into the so into those bold shadows burnt siennas and greens a little bit of yellows and then I'll come back and reset that lighter petal on there here a little more thicker paint sometimes if the and this is what happens guys if you're not used to uh, painting like I was an oil painter for a long long time and then I had to leave them when I got when they became toxic for me so I you know moved into acrylics and but I'm used to working on stuff that's really really wet if you're not used to that and that bothers you you're an acrylic so you just let it dry up a little bit that's what I like about it I can just let that dry up just ever so and then I'll come back and work it again and it always works it always works so that one's this kind of pretty sitting in there let's uh let's put some of this tone right back in here let's go 
some of these grayer. See, I'm not quite as white, so I was working that whites and warms out there. You can see this one's a little bit more gray. I'm moving away from my light. I'm still in the light right here, but I'm moving further down away from the light. So I want this to not be as white. Let's keep this a little more white, a little more gray here. We'll push this right into the front of that one. Let's go a little gray, a little blue right down in here onto this shadow side of the bowl. And see, I'll lift off and pick up some of that original pink right there that was underneath. I love to just paint by pushing around. For me, that just is just great stuff. Let's put a bit, we, we got a little cold here. We were gonna put some strokes of that warmer orange in there. So let's just do that right in there. Maybe a stroke or two here in some areas. This kind of opens the rose up a little bit as well here, okay? And uh, maybe a mark or two just to say back petals here, like that. And we might just leave it really casual here. The centers, are, I don't like the centers to be really kind of that small. They're kind of a dot there. So I do like to kind of open up the centers a little bit more here. I don't want to paint too much and lose that casual nature of it. But uh, that that kind of works in there. But now, this is one thing I always tell my students. I've got this real, real dark centers, and they start to bother me here because my eye bounces through the centers. So when that starts to happen, i got to get some of that dark cool further out into the painting. And... Um, you know, and that's the fix for it. That's what you, just what you have to do. So let's push in. So we'll push in some of that right there. We'll then take our warm, a little bit of blue and grays here and just kind of just lightly drag through that to incorporate that violet further back into that rose. And so you see what happens when you do that. See, the center starts to soften out a little bit more as the viewer starts to pick up this center color a little further out, see? And so, yeah, there we go. Just like that, see? Makes it look like you know what you're doing. See, let's put some of that right over here. A mark or two right over there, okay? Just a nice casual mark of it is all it really needs to really say, you know, boom, there it is. Okay, let's put some of that, those two, quinacridone and the red violet. So those would be pretty. Sometimes you'll let this whole edge here just kind of fall right into that whole shadow side and it makes the whole rose pretty over there. And uh, But that's up to you. Let's put the light in. Okay, so I'm just going to pinch wipe my brush, grab some of the yellows and some white. Let's put the light in right in here this is the light pull that pull and push and pull a few times just a few times and you'll grab that movement into that rose there okay and uh, then we'll grab some like some more petals here maybe this one is more pushed up like this and then it's gonna and then it goes down. So slightly different shape to it than some of the other ones. We can, you know, I'm very much going out, but I can very much push petals this way as well. And we'll just, what we, what I like to do sometimes is just put color on and push it around and see what happens in there, you know. And so maybe I'll just take a bit of an edge here and just kind of like draw the idea of a petal. And so this one comes in, this one pulls down, like that. There, like that, so you see the edge. So it's a little different. And bring that edge right up to, to there, like that. So that whole rose starts to take on a little different shape. You can clean up some of these edges if you want to make it look like it pulls in. You can... Uh, Add just a bit more bowl color right in there and bring those together you can sometimes what I'll do is just stroke this next one light one really light which is what I'm gonna do here 
really light right in front of it. So and so this one sits right there in front of it here, and it hits that light right there like that. See, and I'll let that light hit. And this is the lights the the light strike that I'm doing here is going to dry down. So sometimes I'll go ahead and leave it really quite harsh like that and then determine later do I need to soften that down so sometimes I do that sometimes I don't yeah <laughs> you know yeah it's up to you so here I've got a, a pretty good idea where I'm going to go with this let's just uh let's get really super casual with this next one right in here and uh I want to put a, a smaller one right up in here and so I'm just going to push in right here. Let's take some of this gray color here. And uh, so I'm, it's going to be one here that's just kind of sitting on the ground. So it's going to lose some of its shape. It's going to be distorted and stuff here. Okay, so I'm just going to paint. I don't, and this is the thing, after I've got some really nice roses here, the rest of the roses can go in just as blurry shapes because your eye, and if I, especially if I use the same types of colors and stuff on them here, your eye is going to say rose. But this casual manner in which these others are painted are going to lighten up and airy up the painting here. So, you know, and, and this is what I, this is what I like to do as well. So, so I'll put on like this and yeah, I get some, wild marks and stuff like that on there okay and i've determined as a rose painter that it is the center that gives you the feel of the rose so i'll show you that just one second because some of you probably think i've just lost my mind and no i haven't i'll show you here and we'll push some of that to soften that Soften some of that mark there. Now, what really truly makes a rose is the center. So now I'm going to take a little bit of my my darker red, and if I just spin that center, you start to see more of the rose. See, all I have to do is put in that spinning little bit of that paint there, and you start to see more of the rose. And there's but the rose is casual all throughout here. See, it's just casual edges and stuff and it is that spinning center. Let's put a touch of that red orange in there, okay? A touch of that in there, boom. Just to get some of that color in there, that'll be great. And I'll, you know, I'll put some calyxes in and stuff like that, you know, we'll do that art thing. I'm gonna take a bit of my burnt sienna and green, maybe a bit of blue and violet, which makes a real nice cooler dark here okay nice cool or dark and I'm going to come in and impart some of that real cool very carefully little marks of it here into some of that center of interest area there now that's a little too much contrast for me and and it's a little too cool so I'll, what I'll do is I'll just take a little burnt sienna and break it just a bit and see how that burnt sienna adds a touch of the warmth so i like the the little edges or contrast of the dark and but sometimes it's too much and you have to put it in and try and uh, then you can take some of it out so here we'll push that in back here for the back edge of the bowl where that's going to come in i want to put some leaves and stuff here on this edge so I'll bring the bowl and that shadow kind of together there. And you see my bowl is still wet here from where I put it on a little while ago. It's still wet. But uh, let's touch in a little bit of that edge right up here. And this is when I want it to fade out real nice. I'll use extender because it's thinner. So I, it's almost like glazing it here onto the surface there. And so I can see my center of interest of my painting here and determine whether or not I really like it. And I do like that. But let's take some of this dark here and we'll see. We'll read that right up onto the top of this. So this is the shadow from the top band, that little beaded edge on the vase here. And I'll push some of that in. So that's this shadow on the beaded edge of the base. And... 
let's push some of that right into the back back here as well bringing those two kind of together a bit and maybe even take out some of this round super roundness to the back of this rose just by cutting in a little bit you can do that negative painting that i say all the time and push and blur some of those edges and stuff there and you know maybe maybe we want there's a real pretty color that is used a lot by the Victorian painters that is a real grayed uh, green. And it's blue, it's blue, green, burnt sienna, and white. And you vary the blue in it. Blue and burnt sienna are almost complements, so they gray really nice. But you vary that bluish color into that. Now this is probably a little light uh, for in here, but we can add a simple mark of it to push that color in there and suggest a lower leaf in there. See, it's a pretty color, it's a beautiful color in there. And you know, we can drop in here. So as you get these, some of these, and it's a cooler color, which is going to help our painting here quite a bit. Let's go a little more blue, green, and burnt sienna as a shadow here. Push some of that color in, and then we'll lift this other color back up on top here. Just for right now, just to see what that color looks like in there, and you can see it does a lot, okay? Whew, got those main roses on there like that. What are we, 51 minutes? That's not too bad into the painting here, 51 minutes. So... <clears throat> I have that in. We want to work on some of that bowl, but I've got to get some of the front of my ground and some of the stuff that I need to do here. And of course, these back roses, you saw how quick this one was. This is why I call my 10 minute roses and stuff here. We're going to do a lot of that into the back and maybe even shift some of these back roses a little bit more to a reddish color, you know, so I keep those white ones and stuff right up front. Now, as this starts to dry down, and that's still wet, but I'm just going to, let me get rid of that green. I, that would be a little tragic, but you can, let me show you here, because, you know, art is about possibilities, guys. That's all it is, possibilities. And so you got to, excuse me, you got to try all kinds of things and take a little bit of this green that you had right there and splash it, just a bit of it, in onto that side. So your eye will just lightly pick up that tone. And that's when it becomes great, you know. So maybe just a bit of that in there. But let's put a bit of white and build the front mark here of this petal here a bit more. There we go. And so you see that light on it a touch more, which works, which works pretty good on that. Okay, so it's it's all, I'm keeping an eye on my light and stuff as I paint this and what I'm painting it through. All right, so we have some leaves and stuff like that we want to add back there, some back roses. We might do some quick, just dirty, what I call dirty quick blocking in here, some ideas. These back roses to their sizes. Maybe we want some of them. Let's make a softer red by... Just taking some of our red right over here to our green, adding some uh, adding some white to it. See, we'll make a real soft, dusty, dirty pink, which would be very pretty back in some of these guys here, too, as we make white and red roses, white and pink roses. And to make that uh, harmony go, just in some of them, put some of that red in. See? And then you'll get that nice, harmonious color. Karen, see how that color now travels over here? So I'm always, you know, and that's part of the thing is when I build compositions, I'm always trying things. Sometimes they don't work. And you, sometimes you have to lower the price of your painting because it didn't work, okay? But sometimes you just go, wow, that's really cool. And you file that one away for later, you know? But, um, yeah, so we have some back flowers back here. And this one, I want to make a turned back one, which means we put the, the heavier color right here by the calyx here. 
So that's where the calyx will go. And see how I love just to push that around. And if it's too bright, you got to remember sometimes it's you got to drop that intensity. You can have that darkness back here, but you know don't get that too bright. And so add a little green to it, which tones that down. Green. Work your complements. That's why I always like these right in here together. They're very close. This this is very close to that. These are all close together and in complements, and they work pretty efficiently for graying each other down. So let's just put a little more red, brighten this up just a bit more, okay? Make a mark or two. Maybe this is a little bit more red rose out here. So we'll make a mark or two of that and uh, of what that one's going to be. I'm just going to give an idea here. I'm just kind of playing to see what my composition might look like here, turning a rose here. So you're looking at the back side of it here, coming out to the calyx and that, that way. Some short strokes, because these are the, the back. You're looking at the basically the calyx, the base of the rose. So your front ones right here have to pull right down towards that calyx. And that's what will bring the rose together here, okay? And we'll get more of a shadow, reds, these red shadows and stuff up over here, this side. Let these colors just kind of blur and play. This is a, this is very much impressionistic back here. So I don't want to, I'm kind of playing a little too long there. I want to go quicker here. So push that color in. Push that around there. Maybe um, uh, another kind of petal here that will pull that back that way a bit. All of those petals there. So then what you have is we'll take that calyx, that green, maybe a little green and yellow and burnt sienna right now. Just as an idea, we can adjust it later, but this will be the calyx here of this particular rose coming into that part right there. So it's going to sit back. This one will come up right up here into the front. I'm going to have to do a little bit of work to uh, bring that in a little softer, but that will give me a good idea here for that rose. Maybe another one coming back here. That will be just what I call the ghost, the blurry part of it here. It is just going to be an idea of the row sitting out here to the sides here. Nothing. They're really kind of nothings here. And just blurry color. And because all of the other stuff is all going to be here. See, your eye's going to track in here. So nothing that I'm doing right now is detracting from here. And so it's taking some of the journey over there, but it's not detracting from it. And that's what I'm looking for. Let's take some of our reds. This guy's going to be more red and point down this way. Ah, got two of them pointing there and there. So maybe point this one up slightly out to the side here like this. There we go. That's better. Just out to the side here. But I just I don't like that. I so I'm always watching those centers because that's controlling that, see? Alright. So let's get a bit more light here. A little bit of light, but we want to leave this one. Let's go over here. A little bit red, pink. A little bit more of a pink rose here. So I have a whole run. And rather than go, you know, whites and pinks. And stuff all together what I usually do is group them like you would find in a composition some reds and some pinks and stuff together here whites and stuff like that so we'll push some of this around this is uh, all subject to change I always tell myself that it's all subject to change let's uh, to find this uh, up a little bit more. 
There we go. That's better. That's a better, that's a better angle for it. It all makes a difference. Let's put a bit of a light here. Leave that. I like that little tiny hit of that light. I'm not sure it's going to be proper by the time it's done, but we like it for right now. And let's put in some lighter pink. Just ideas here. And um, yeah, I don't want that rose. That rose is kind of getting big, so I don't want it to get any bigger than that. Definitely, maybe take it down a bit. Let's take a little yellow. So what I do is I look for that particular color there. Yellow, burnt sienna, a little green, and some white. So I look for particularly that kind of color that is going to be on that and back up here into my background just a little bit more green and burnt sienna here and light here a little bit maybe a touch of yellow just a let's push that in doesn't have to be perfect just has to be close and let's just push back some of the edges and just small down this road see so i start to small it down a bit Get a bit more yellow here, which is this part of the bowl. We'll go right into that one right there. Push it back a bit. There we go, like that. And let's just go ahead and add some more of those yellows right in here for right now and really start to see what this bowl is going to be like here. There we go. And this is what I like. See, because this is starting, it's tacky. It's starting to dry up. But see, I can put these marks on here and I can, uh, you know, push the color through and I get all of this other variation, which is what I really like when I'm doing this type of painting. I like this type of variation. And um, so then we'll take a little bit more light here. I like the variation and the variation, when the, when the color, see all that drag I can do on that? That gives more variation. That comes as that, as that underpainting gets tacky, sticky. And that's why I really prefer painting on acrylics than oils, because the oils stay wet too long for me. I don't get to that stickiness that I like into the painting that I can do some of these really unique variations of tone and I can soften them out a bit where I want and and stuff but I can do this more variation of tone that I really like when I get that sticky color if that makes sense let's um yeah so let's get this deeper red right here now that might be too much I didn't add my green to that that might be too much let's add just a touch of green to that soften that out a bit that's better so I'll get the feeling of red without getting uh, there we go that's better and uh, let's put a few centers in so that we can check the directions of our roses here those back 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 and so see with the centers it's the center and the bowl that really makes the rose see so that gives you the idea of the rose is that center and the bowl here which works that works let's just drop a bit of this here we go yeah Yep, and that white mark just might be too much. So we'll take some of it off. Just some of it, not all of it. And let's lighten up to a lighter pink right here. There we go. And maybe a even lighter little edge yet to say petal right in there. So it gives us a little different shaped rose. Maybe back some of that off with some of our red. 
not too bright here. Red, get back to some of that bowl shape there. That reddish bowl here. There we go. And you know, I can lip, pull back like this because I know that light color is sitting underneath it. So I can do whatever I like. Here's a lighter little edge here. You know, do we leave that in there or so? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. That might be that might be a good transition through our light back there, especially if we get this lighter little pink right up here. Pull that down. Let this pink lightness from this because the light is coming up and through here. So it's got to hit right up in here. And maybe even just a little bit more of an edge right here to bring this right in front of that little calyx we put in there. That rose right up in front of it, just a touch. And you see I pushed that little bit of green in there. I let that happen because that, that uh, makes the petal look like it's transparent there, see? Gives it a transparent kind of look. Okay, so now let's just, a little extender. Let's take some of our greens, some of our burnt siennas, greens, those blue greens, a little bit of blue burnt sienna. Grab some white to get this grayish color here. Let's push that into this receding rose right back here. And We'll even tap into some of this red with this gray on the brush. Get, and, that, and don't mix it up, just tap into it a minute. And so you'll get this variation of tone as you push it on here. So we'll do a white rose here that is just getting a lot of gray, I think. It's getting a lot of gray. And uh, so we'll bring up just a little bit here right where that light will be most of this rose will sit just marks like that maybe maybe a petal coming forward right here okay maybe a little bit maybe a bit more of a petal here Let's just put a mark or so here. There we go. And see, you don't have to do anything perfect. Just hit those marks. And, you know, you don't have to, you, what I don't want to do is, in the filbert, it's really easy to do is do too many strokes so that it looks like a stroke rose. I don't want a stroke rose. I just want the, the movement and a little edge of a mark that will... Um, kind of, let's do a little darty light, do a little yellow, a little bit of this, just a little brighter red, but a little edge of the mark that will give the direction and stuff of the rose or the petal or suggest a petal here. Doesn't need to be that much on there because the light is diminishing. So, you know, maybe I take some of this gray, the blue gray and this gray, and we drop it in there again, and then we slowly bring up a little bit of light here push that around there we go that might be enough for that rose and this one back here just might get a little bit here just enough to say you did it swirl it around a little bit just enough to say you painted a rose back there and uh, splash some color around you know, splash some of that around. And, you know, it's we got to do the background before we judge just how much we're going to do. So that sets those in. Now I'm going to do some, as it goes out over here, I'm going to do some more roses and stuff. You know, I want to reach out. The Dutch did this a lot to expand the composition. So I put out some ideas of some stems and stuff, but... Maybe we push in a smaller little rose right out here. And we'll make this smaller little rose, since it's reaching out, a little bit more oval shape. Let's do that. Because as the rose is younger and more towards the bud, they head more to an oval shape. And you would expect to see that further out from the composition. 
So we'll do some of that. And let's take some of this nice reddish kind of color. Maybe just push it right back into here. A little bit of green going through that. What is this? This is can be just like a back rose back here. Let's push a little color back in here. Just put the color in. So as we get further out and away from it, we're going to look for just color. Like I can take, now I'm going to do the background and stuff back here. But I can increase the whole look of these roses over here just by taking some of this color and just marking it through here. You know, like you see me do with so many of the other um, paintings. And, and that's exactly what uh, the Grand Manor style does is you move... He moves a lot of the color further out. Now that's a little bright, so let's add a touch of green. We'll just stroke right through it a couple of times and take it back down with some of those greens here. You know, this could be, that's all you need is this blur of color back there that might suggest other roses. And maybe you put a couple marks of just light color right out through there like that. And the viewer's eye will start to see some of the stuff that's going on. And... If you have too much going on, like, oh, that's a pretty heavy edge of red or something there, then let's just make our blue-green. Tone that down just a bit here. Let's make our blue-green and take some of that out here. Just take some of that whole, that whole unit there out here and let that soften out and maybe that whole coloring and stuff like that goes over there. So there's going to be all kinds of ways in which you do it. So what, what I'm doing here is I'm just really, I'm heading to my red roses and some right out through here. And then we'll, and those reds carry in like I, that red I just used over there. I might want to drop some of it right back up in here and see that is, so that color appears that color appears in other parts of the painting and it pulls your eye further towards that. So it's a, it's a harmony. I'm always looking for is my color moving back and forth through my painting here. And some of that red can go right up into this bowl and stuff right up over here. See how it picks that up and it gets that nice modeling that's right there. You know, and uh, yeah, that works. Maybe we'll get uh, kind of a bluish green, darker shadow and cool it with a little bit of violet. And let's come right into here. That might be too cool, so I'll, and I'll warm it with just some burnt sienna. Let's just drop some of that right in here and take some of that right into the shadow of this rose. Just push it in. Let some of those colors blur together right back up in there. We might put some leaves in there. This becomes a, a really good, like I said, it's our focal area. It's right in here. <clears throat> becomes a really good area to help us set that focal area here into our painting right there. It's just boom, boom, boom. See? And some of that dark, really cool right in there. That works pretty good right in there. See? And then we can soften it here. Coming out, maybe there's going to be a leaf back here. Let's uh, add a little extender. Soften this out a bit here. There we go. Let some of that green just sit back in there. Here. There, like that. Let's... um. Get some of it. I like the green burnt sienna leaves. My favorite colors of them. A little bit of extender. And I like these colors of leaves. And we can push some right in here. Now, I'm not done with this background here. But I can certainly start some of these leaves and stuff. You know, so I have more stuff to do with my background and everything else than I want to do. But... You know, and you can make these leaves, you know, like the little rose leaves, a little pointed edge on them and stuff like that if you want. Or you can do them more casual like I do in the majority of my leaves that I like to paint. That's all up to you. You know, for, 
I like to blur off those edges just a bit. That's all up to you. Yeah. And we'll drop in some smaller ones and stuff here. Boom. Maybe this one goes out to its longer one out there onto the edge. Now, and again, I like to take some of this off with my hand, just blur through, and that I took that point off. So I get to do it again. <laughs> How do you get so good at stuff? You take it off and then you gotta go put it back on again. Jeez Louise. Imagine how much I can get done if I didn't take it off. There we go. That's kind of a nice look to that going back there. And you can add, you know, one of the things, I normally will let that tack up a bit, but you can take some of this cool color, see, and just dump it right there onto the cooler side of the leaf or some of that into some of these marks and get that tonal cool color. And those of you that want to learn the Grand Manor style, that's one of the things that you do is those marks of those warms and those cools tone. The tone, you know, painting with the tones and learning to see the tones is the key there. That's a little bit too tiger stripey for me now. I played with that too much. See, it's just... So I'll get some of that off of there. There we go. That's much, much better. It's not, they're dark, but they're not as much dark. Now, how do I make those recede? I'll let that dry up, and then I'm going to wash some color back up over them, and that'll take care of that. It'll make it look like I know what I'm doing. So I'm going to take some of my burnt sienna, some of my green here, okay, and I'm going to reinforce my horizontal line here a bit. Right here, like that, right that little bit of it right there. And, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect at all. I'm going to take and increase some of the darks, the looks. Now, I like this kind of blurriness back through that background there. And that light and dark movement there, I like that. I want to... I'm, in other words, I want to put in some stuff that I really know needs to be there. Like, for example, the darker, ca cooler cast shadow. So some violets, cooler violets, blues, burnt sienna, blues, red violet here. Darker, cooler color. That is, oh, that's a beautiful color. This would be the cast shadow. And then right up underneath that front little foot, the contact shadow of this vase right over here and we'll pull some of it out i like the fractured edge here so i'll break that edge here boom that's that nice coolness of that and some of that will go right back we'll get that nice shape back to that bowl i'm off just a little bit but that's okay because it's mine right <laughs> and Maybe take a bit of that that's real cool and dark there. So maybe just drag a bit of that burnt sienna through there just to warm it and break that tone slightly. See? There we go. Just break that tone slightly. I like to do that stuff. And let's just drag through. That, that looks pretty good. And let's take some of that, that dark... That's going to come right about in here. Boom. Yeah, maybe a little higher, huh? I don't have my... I don't, I don't have my square right here. Normally you see me paint and I have that big square. And I don't have it here anywhere. So, yeah, so we don't have that. So we go to another trick. One right here. One right there. That's right about right. Could go up just a tiniest here. And then we can drag that further out. Just let that just drag out there. Right like that. And we'll we'll do some more work with that, but uh, we want that just to fade away there. Like that. 
and uh, maybe a little touch or two in here of that dark. Just make sure into these real super dark areas that you don't have any light popping back up through there. We don't want that. Let's take some of this. Let's thin this out and let's come back up here. This is this is going to be a, a darker part of the painting again. You know, if you want to, if you want to, uh, you know, keep light and you do a through light, this would actually be a little darker. Now, I'm going to put on a lot of color here and soften it off. So don't have a heart attack on me right now. Okay, so I'm going to push this on. And then I'm just going to come through and soften it. Now, you have a, you have a real dark color that is creating a lot of contrast. And I learned this so many years ago. How do you, how can you soften that look? I mean, you may like all that movement look. Some of you will like it. But some of you that don't, what you do is add a little white to that color with a little bit of extender. And you come back through and that light clouds it, grays it, clouds it, and so will soften the look. And then as you come back this time again, the look becomes softer. And we can add a little bit of I like to add the paper towel movement in there for the background here. Just a, I like it when the paper towel gets full of paint, then it just does a little bit at a time here. And as this starts to tack up, you can get some really nice looks. Now you can do it with the brush. I showed you with the brush in so many paintings but you can get some really nice, and you can pull in some nice, after you get some of that work, you can pull in some nice verticals and horizontals to give you a, a difference into the painting. So there's a lot of really pretty effects, especially with the paper towel that can be done here in a painting. It's really a lot of fun here. You know, it's just get some of those different looks and effects there. And um, let's come forward. We'll let this kind of soften out. I'm going to build a lot of color up here in the front. And uh, so you, you'll see. And then we'll let that, as soon as that all dries there, we might have to do that in another video. Because <laughs> it's going to be wet a while. And let's bring some of our yellows. Boom, warms. And this is where I love to just, I start getting this and to, to just pound on some color and play the colors and stuff like that. You know, and, you know, I'll put in like touches of reds. You've seen me do this on other really casual, pretty paintings where you start to push in all the other colors. But let's go some light. Boom, let's get some light in here. Here. Through. We're going to do this several times. This is just the first look. I'm going to do this several times building up because I eventually want to go very opaque with the coloring up here. So I want to do it several times. We go burnt siennas and yellows. A little bit of green. Strokes through. And this is where you, you play a lot of your tones in your painting and build and we're, you know you can do the you know the more casual backgrounds that you see me do in some paintings and stuff or you can start see what I'm looking for is this modeling of this tone and so I'll pound this on here and get that look going in there with that light coming into there and some of that light I'll thin it out and express it. I don't have to do a whole lot right back there because it is already very light. But that'll get expressed back up in there. But I'll also go to some of the darks here. Some of the, t the original colors. See, there's that burnt sienna. And that's real pretty right up here in that front corner. That burnt sienna, that would, you know, some strokes of that would be very pretty. And see, you're, you're going to build and build and build marks and marks and marks of it. And we'll get some more yellows and lights. 
here and work some of that further out here into the painting, some of the, the look. And you see as I build this, you can see as I, as I build this, it's, as I add more and more white, it becomes smoother and smoother and smoother. So you get this real smooth look. If you don't add too much, you can get that kind of model-y look. And you know, what do you do? That's up to you. So if I took some of this light really thin, especially as this starts to tighten up, and I just pull through it a little bit, you see, I start to add that smoothness, that softness to it with just that light. So that's, so sometimes, you know, working with the paper towel can add you lots of interest, but sometimes it'll go like maybe a little too much for a lot of you and you want to soften it out. And that's when you put just a little bit of light in there and it does that. But back to our color, boom, boom, and Try not to pull one too much. Go back and forth, a little burnt sienna and green here. We'll go a little burnt sienna and green. And we'll push that in. Okay. Boom, just like that. See, I like those colors up there. That's what I'm liking. Get some of those, build some of those colors that are right in there. And boom. Push some of that back. So it's, it's a lot of strokes, multiple strokes, multiple colors back and forth. You know, looking at what each area needs. And, you know, if you really want to get into some of that all a Prima style, that beautiful, you know, Grand Manor all a Prima style, you've got to get into this type of look that is just, and see how that just builds like that. And it takes a lot of putting those strokes on and you don't manipulate them too much, you know. Don't go through them too much. You got to, and you know, with the acrylics, it's really nice because you just let it dry and then you can see if you need to do more. That's what I like. There's a bit of the green. And let's just put a bit of that burnt sienna right along its side. Pull down just a bit. There, see? Yeah, and you know, maybe we'll take just another mark of that a little further out here. Pull some of that down. Pull across and down the horizontals, the verticals there. You know, they just do so much. Let's get that nice burnt sienna pull there. I try not to, and I'm pulling really long here. I try not to do that. So when I do, I'll come back and break it up. I don't like big, long, horizontal ones in there all the time. Um, that can get distracting here. But let's push some of that right back in here a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, and, and you know, if you pull through with your paper towel, see how it adds a little bit of the light, a little bit of the light movement in there, which is kind of nice sometimes, kind of nice. And then... You know, that's up to you, just how much you're going to, uh, you know, put in there. I do like some there. So that sets up some of our, uh, of our light. That light is not completely done, but I think what I'm going to do, besides go have lunch, clean up my ass, <laughs> and I'll need to put out some more colors. So, and I'm going to let this dry up. Um, I want this to dry up now before I do some more, some more work, some additional work on that. So I'll just start this up and into another video. So we have this part, but maybe I'll fix this foot before I go here so that I remember that I need to do that. That, that, uh, ellipse here on the foot is off. So we'll just drop that in there and, uh needs to drop down just a bit 
we'll fix all this stuff. I'm not into the actual, you know, where I spend a whole bunch of time correcting my ellipses and stuff and making sure that the drawing is correct. So when we come back into the next video, we'll finish up some of this stuff. We'll start, probably start right in here. On, we'll let this all dry up. We'll start right up in here onto our container and stuff. We got some good stuff going on here, but I don't have enough. I really like those cools that I had here, and I don't feel like I have enough over there. But if I try to put them in right now, it's just going to get a cloudy mess because it's way too wet. So we're going to let it dry, okay? And I'll see you guys, and we'll do this video, then I'll see you guys on the next one. So this one doesn't get too long because I... I get complaints sometimes when the videos are too long. So I'll shoot another video with the whole thing finishing it all up, okay? Adding all of the, the rest and the, the vines and the little stuff and painting all of this and bringing it all to completion, okay? All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for joining me.